The San Francisco Bay Area offers live Irish music any day of the week. On Mondays, you can join Kaylee dancing in Berkeley at the Starry Plow Pub. On Tuesdays, you can set dance to live music in the South Bay in Sunnyvale at Lily Max Irish Pub. On Wednesdays in the North Bay, there is set dancing at the Redwood Cafe in Katadi, hosted by Michael McCulloch. On Thursday night, you could join us for set dancing classes at the United Irish Cultural Centre in San Francisco or at the Plow and Stars Pub, also in San Francisco, for set dancing to live Irish music. On Friday nights, there are set dancing classes in the North Bay in San Anselmo at the Brosnan School of Irish Dance, courtesy of Lisa Brosnan. There are sessions all over the Bay Area on many days of the week, an Irish dance of all sorts has been known to happen spontaneously at some of them. Set dancing remains a highlight and core activity of our branch. St. Patrick's Day, Iha Hauna, and Christmas were special Kayleys. Our traveling Kayleys included celebrating the Celtic New Year in Reno, Nevada, entertaining at church dinner dances and local rest homes during the St. Patrick's Day season, and celebrating Kathy Jones's 90th birthday. We auditioned for the San Francisco Ethnic Dance Festival twice, danced at St. Philip's Festival, and were visited by the Straw Boys at Joni and Francie's wedding. Our wonderful musicians, Doug Lauder, Julie Horner, and David Chatwich represented Coltus as they entertained Irish President Michael D. Higgins in October 2015. The CCE North American Convention in San Francisco in 1998 was a joyful celebration of music, song, dance, storytelling, and best of all, camaraderie and friendship. The lobby and halls of the Marriott Hotel rang out day and night with music and laughter. A beautiful story of immigration was played out on stage at the banquet. We were honored to have CCE Director General, Lauras Omoroku and Una Omoroku and our great friends Bill and Lily McAvoy as our guests. Jim Belcher and his committee ensured an outstanding weekend for all. I first got involved 20 plus years ago when they were having the convention and they needed some help and they got, I got a phone call to help them. Got to the hotel at the convention and I uh, got my chores on, on, on a mezzanine, which is an ideal spot. And I taking care of some doorways and I could see the musicians down in the, the, the lobby of the hotel. That was, I'll never forget it. There were 19 musicians playing in, a, in a, this lobby, and the ceilings were about 20, 25 foot high, and the acoustics were just absolutely out of the world. It was like an orchestra. It was so, so beautiful. My first convention was in Pasiphone, New Jersey, the following year, 1999, and the music was absolutely out of this world. Again, the, the cream of the crop were there, there's no doubt. And we did all, we had done a lot of dances here before we went on. It was enjoyable. I was there to do, do a lot of the sets with, with strangers. And there were strangers at the beginning, but they were, we were great friends when we were partying. And uh, my son was with me, and he had a, a CD player. He was playing some traditional music. And the room we had were just one or two floors above a, a little courtyard and there was a young guy down there playing his accordion and they happened to be playing the same tune that my son was playing so he was finished my son sticks his head out the window and he shouts down at him what is the name of that tune you were playing and the guy looked up at him and he said oh, it's called looking out the window 
December 26, 1985 was the start of our Ren Boys tradition, inspired by our first chairperson, Bridie Riley, to bring entertainment to the residents of her care home, and it became our annual Christmas holiday event. As it grew in popularity, expanding our visits to the homes of the Murphys, Keans, Lundys, and Scanlon families, and various pubs, we carpooled from place to place with Frank Lynch in his decorated Renmobile. The first monthly evening singing session organized by Michael Murphy, Nikki Ragsdale and Anne Shack was held at the Murphy home on 17th Avenue. Soon Deirdre McNamara and Michael Jones took up the call. Michael Jones became the ringleader around 2003 and in 2006 they put a collection of standard songs together, mostly Irish and Scottish songs. Pre-pandemic, they met on the first Friday of each month at a different host's house. They currently continue this popular session monthly via Zoom. Do you agree for hard to? This Misha Amelda White. My name is Amelda White, and I'm the Irish language officer for the Cooley Keegan branch of Coltus Coltori Erin here in San Francisco and also the Irish language officer for the West region. We've been teaching Irish here at this beautiful cultural centre since about 2008. And a woman named Nikki Ragsdale was the Trori Nagelga for Coltis way back at that time and uh, organised the classes at the cultural centre and invited me to teach, which I was very happy to do. Uh, we had a wonderful variety of students from all walks of life that came here for a variety of reasons. We established uh, total immersion weekends. We had teachers, the very best teachers came over from Ireland to um, administer the, week, the total immersion weekends. and. As the pandemic approached, now we were in a little bit of a bind, how are we going to continue teaching? We would have to close the classroom. However, we uh, switched to using Zoom, so nobody had to travel. And we have been doing Zoom classes for the past year. And so I've been teaching from my home. And uh, we have even gone further afield by taking courses in Los Angeles and Canada and various other locations where the traditional total immersion weeks and weekends would be held. So we have done more through Zoom than maybe just by being in a classroom. And the uh, materials available to us have been ama amazing. So, so the language is alive and well at the Irish Cultural Centre in San Francisco. Our branch has had a float in the San Francisco St. Patrick's Day Parade every year since the 1970s. For the past 20 years, Casey Curtin has directed this tradition. The late master craftsman, Pat Joyce, was invaluable in his ability to visualize Casey's ideas and then direct the volunteers to build the float. Connie Lynch choreographs a performance for 16 to 24 dancers and coordinates with the musicians, providing rousing entertainment along the parade route. And the other one was Frank Lynch, uh, further back in Kerry. So, and, he, and he was in, into the traditional music. And our experiences with 
been to uh, building floats for St. Patrick's Day, and that was quite a, quite a gathering. It was almost like going to the flashing back at home when we were kids. The crowd of people around, and there always a couple of witty people and a lot of fun. But it, it was quite a chore. It took a whole day. We'd go down to to Cunningham's van and storage place where we stored our a box there with our gear in it from one St. Patrick's Day to the next. And Charlie Cunningham treated us well with his trucks and his trailers and we would build our float on it and we were fortunate doing so we kind of we had one people who was active building the float with us these days is Casey Curtin everything she did was right as a result we wound up getting a few first place prizes with her IDs particularly whatever the team of the parade would be and one of them was, go, one year was the team, play team, like that, he was go green. So we went green. We put some, like, looked like uh, wind generators on, on the flatbed uh, uh, trailer. And we got a, a plastic uh, sheet of plexiglass, charcoal gray, charcoal color, put a frame around it and looked like a solar panel. And it took quite a bit of work, it's, of course, parts of it had to be dismantled and redone really a different way, but eventually we got it done with the help of uh, Pat Joyce, who was helped us a lot, and he was a good idea how things would stay together and wouldn't fall, the thing wouldn't fall apart during transport from the construction site to the, to the uh, parade and back. And the, the judges, and that particular day thought we were running the generator off our solar system so we wound up getting first prize for that so I, that was we had a pretty uh, uh, crack with that one that was funny and also uh, another person who had a, her heart was in in the coolie keegan branch was florence lynch keegan how she loved to be on the floor, and she loved the dancing, and just like all the other ladies, including well, Josephine Brogan, and, and uh, there's too many to mention. But uh, those are the ones who went by, and we definitely missed them. <laughs> The Lafferty family moved from County Galway to Santa Rosa, California and became an integral part of our community. In October 2017, an unimaginable tragedy struck the area as the California Tubbs wildfire devastated communities and sadly the Lafferty's beautiful home burned to the ground. In true Lafferty style, they hosted a wake on all that was left of their home. Musicians, singers and dancers gathered on the concrete pad. Paddy provided the dancers with hazmat suits. They stepped into their Wellingtons and did a few figures of a set to the rousing live music. It was a great send off for the old home.
The Lafferty's rebuilt their new home on the same site and it is the setting for a lovely tune played by fellow Clareman, Father John Griffin and Sinead Lafferty. With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, we were forced to cancel our 2020 North American Provincial Convention, as well as all Cayley's sessions, meetings and St. Patrick's Day gatherings. To brighten the lives of our community, resourceful members created virtual concerts, Christmas Card from San Francisco, Ren Boys Night Live on Zoom, and the Step Into San Francisco Virtual Youth Concert produced by San Francisco Cooley Keegan Youth Officer, Quiva Lyons. Traditional Irish entertainers from around the world participated and brought great joy. Nellie McGee crafted matching wedding masks for her marriage to Michal Minahan while they were cheered on by a multitude of family and friends in the United States and Ireland on Zoom. Everyone, so this is the San Francisco, the Cooley Keegan branch of Colsus Kultori Iran. We dance every Thursday at the Plow and Stars in San Francisco, usually, but we've been meeting on Zoom every Thursday oh since the pandemic started. We've been getting various bands from around the Bay Area and beyond. And tonight we're very lucky to have William Bizek and Angeline Lalou, and this is our this is all the dancers we have who come along and see us every Thursday. So let's have a big hand for uh, Angelina Lou and William Bisek. All right, we're going to play a couple of jigs. Um, and the first one, technically it's called Up and About in the Morning, but we heard Dave McCourt, the piper um, from the South Bay play it a whole bunch of times at O'Flaherty's. And at the plow. And at the plow, but mostly to polarities. Uh, so we call it McCourt's jig, and um, it's followed by some hag or other. Uh, old hag, you've killed me. Yeah, that one. Yes. Conventions have brought us such delight, friendship and camaraderie, not to mention great music, song, dance and adventures. Here is Maureen Brady to explain how all roads lead to San Francisco for the 2022 North American Cultus Convention. Hello from San Francisco. I'm Maureen Brady, a member of the board and excited to be a member of our convention committee. We're cautiously optimistic as we move forward with our planning and we look forward to welcoming you to the Crown Plaza Hotel, April 21st to 24th, 2022, less than a year away. Our hotel is located in Foster City, which is not even a 10 minute drive from SFO. We're lining up workshop leaders, entertainers, and we're so excited to let you know that Pat Murphy will be leading set dancing. John Whelan and his crew will be there, as well as many other entertainers. They are all on board. You can find web updates on our website, ccconvention, 
2022.com. A giant welcome awaits you. And remember, all roads lead to San Francisco, April 21st to 24th, 2022. fondly remember those who are no longer with us, but who we shared such good times with and who brought us much joy. Our sincere thanks to Cultus Coltori Aaron and all those responsible for their contributions in the production of this video, preserving the living history of our branch.